Hi everyone. If you are managing virtual networks in Azure, you know that memorizing private IP addresses like 10.0.0.4 and 10.0.0.5 is a nightmare. Even worse, if you delete and recreate a VM, that IP might change, breaking your application connections. Today we are going to solve this using Azure Private DNS. I am going to show you how to resolve hostnames internally securely and without building your own custom DNS server. By the end of this video, you will have a fully working internal domain. So let's dive in. What is Azure Private DNS? Think of it as a phone book for your internal network. It translates human readable names like db.internet.local into IP addresses, but only for private Azure network. There are two major features you need to understand before we click buttons. The zone is the specific human domain name like uh, tech.local. The virtual network link. This is the bridge. You must link your virtual network to the DNS zone. If you don't link it, the virtual machine won't know the phone book exists. Here is exactly what we are going to build right now. We have a virtual network called VNet Demo. We have two VMs, VMDB and VMWeb. We want to be inside uh, VMWeb and send a curl request to VM, uh, vmdb.tech.local and get the index.html file. We are going to use a feature called auto-registration. This means Azure will automatically write the DNS record for us when we create a new virtual machine. No normal typing is needed here. As you can see in the picture, VMWeb is asking the IP address of the VMDB and then the DNS will resolve it and send it back to the VM web. I am logged in in Azure and let's create our resources. Create a resource group called RG Demo in West Europe. Next, I will deploy a virtual network. Let's call it VNet demo in West Europe. Next. Here, uh, I would like to add two more subnets for our two uh, VMs that we are going to create. So create one subnet, which is called SNET VM DB. Add. Another one, Snet, VM, Web. Add. Next. Okay. Now let's deploy our virtual machines. The first virtual machine that I'm going to create is called uh, VMDB. To our resource group, RG Demo, West Europe. We don't need availability zone. And uh, for the image, we go with Ubuntu server. For the sake of simplicity, I will go with a password. Uh, and we create a username and also password here to be able to log in to the server. For the VMDB, we need to open also our HTTP port, HTTP port as well, because we are going to send HTTP requests from uh, VM web to VMDB, and we need it to be open. Click next. Also here remains default. In the networking, uh, we choose our newly created virtual network and we assign the newly created subnet 
for the SNET VM DB. And also everything else remains the same. In the monitoring, I just disable the diagnostics uh, because we, are, we don't need it in the demo. The deployment is done uh, and let's go to create our other uh, virtual machine. Again, the same resource group, this time v uh, VMweb, West Europe, no availability zone required, and we go with Ubuntu server. We choose password, admin, user. And here everything remains the same. In the networking section, uh, again, we uh, choose our newly created virtual network and also SNET VM web. And everything else is fine. Go to management, monitoring, disabling the diagnostics. Okay, the deployment is over and next we need to uh, log in to VMDB and update our packages and install the Nginx. So let's do that. Here we click connect. Uh, for this demo purpose, it is okay if you are uh, using the user password for connecting to the server, but for the production, you might consider Bastion service. Here I uh, copy uh, this value. I paste it to my command. Now we need to provide the password. Okay, we are logged in. So I am updating the packages now. Now we need to install Nginx. Okay, what I want to do now, I would like to update the content of the index.html file that uh, basically we can uh, recognize it when we send the request. So I copy paste uh, this command here, echo this HTML hello from VMDB and we update the HTML in this pad. And it is done. So the next step is that I would like to uh, connect from VM web uh, to VMDB with the private IP address to see if everything is uh, working so far. Okay, here we will uh, go to our VM web, connect, and we copy this value again. Here I uh, open a new tab, paste it, yes, provide the password, okay, we are logged in. Now I would like to grab the IP, private IP address of the VMDB. So we go to uh, our VMDB in the overview section. Here uh, we can copy this value. 
here I just type in curl HTTP and there we go we got our uh, response back from VMDB with that value we just changed before now let's go and create our private DNS zone private DNS zone here I uh, choose our resource group and the name I will call it tech.local for example click next we don't have here any DNS zone file so I here uh, click next and here in this section I am able to link our uh, DNS to our virtual network so let's do that we call it link demo our virtual network is a vnet demo and here uh, is very important we uh, check mark this uh, enable auto registration so after a creation of dns our virtual uh, machines will get automatically the domain related with them and i click create okay our dns is deployed let's go to the resource And here in this section, virtual network links, we might see that uh, our link is created to this virtual network and we can also add here other virtual networks. If we go now to the record sets, we can see that uh, our two virtual machines are automatically listed here, which is really cool. And uh, again, the best part here is that for example if you remove uh, vm web for some reason and you recreated it you don't need to uh, memorize or deal with the ip addresses and uh, your connections for example we won't be uh, broken in the other applications if you have any other connections from different machines so everything uh, will work for you in this way Okay, now let's uh, try to send a request from uh, VMweb to VMDB, but this time not with the IP, but with the domain. So here I am in WebVM and we call curl HTTP VMDB. And we got it. As you can see here, uh, the response is exactly identical but uh, with the help of our uh, local domain registered in private DNS. Uh, before we go, I would like to throw uh, a few tips. Uh, one of them is about uh, geography. So what does that mean? It means that Azure private DNS is a global service. You don't need a separate zone for every region. I can have a VNet in the US and a VNet in Europe, both linked to the same tech.local zone, for example. For the connectivity, many people ask, does this work with VNet peering? And the answer is yes, but remember DN DNS linking handles the same resolution, while VNet peering handles the actual traffic. You need both if you want your US server to talk to Europe server, for example. And the last is that private zones are very cheap services in Azure, but in the other hand, virtual machines are not. So don't forget to 
uh, remove your resources if you were following along or at least shut the virtual machines down to don't create extra cost for yourself and that's it we moved from relying on static ips using fully qualified domain names this is essential for production environments especially when you are using uh, database connection strings or communicating between microservices I hope you find this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.